And let's meet our Toyota opening drive panel. Former Dolphins running back, pass catcher extraordinaire, and current head football coach at Boca Raton, Keith Byers. And sports agent Darren Heitner, CEO of Dynasty Athlete Representation. This team is your family, Michael. When you look at him, you think of me, how you have my back. Are you going to protect the family, Michael? Yes, ma'am. SJ, you're going to want to get this. The Blind Side Curse, Real or Imagined, the feel-good football movie that won Sandra Bullock an Academy Award. It's left miles of misery in its wake, including the Oscar winner herself. In addition, footage of Lawrence Taylor from his heyday with the Giants opens the movie, and now the Hall of Famer is accused of betting an underage hooker. Besides Taylor, Bullock has gotten divorced. Country music star Tim McGraw lives in Nashville, which was hard hit by flooding. Quentin Aaron, the actor who plays the homeless teenager, was dropped by his talent agency because he couldn't land any new parts. And finally, there's the six real college coaches who appear in the movie. Guess what? Not one of them is still coaching at the school they represented. Let's play Six Degrees of the Blind Side as it relates to the Dolphins. The movie was about Michael Orr, who's now with the Ravens. The Dolphins drafted Orr's college roommate or teammate, excuse me, John Jerry, in the third round. Hey, Keith, what chance can Jerry nab one of the open spots on the offensive line? He has a real good chance. I mean, if he has the same success that Michael Orr did in, with the Ravens, that it's going to be a bright future for the Dolphins because he come in, they, they got it projected to start right now. He's taking starter snaps, so hopefully he keeps it up. Hey, and you're an offensive genius, so real quick, your uh, Boca Raton team is going to do pretty good this year. What do you think? Well, it's going to be hard to average over 30 points like we did last year, but, you know, we got the same formula, and we're going to continue with the success we had last year. First off, to defend that district title and then get back in the state playoffs and give it a whirl for the uh, go back to Orlando, hopefully. Just to have those kids uh, catch up passes out of the backfield like you did, we'll be all right. Hey, Darren, the Dolphins still searching for Dan Marino's replacement. How likely can Chad Henney break that Marino curse? I think the problem lies in the question itself. I'm not sure that we should be looking for Dan Marino's replacement. He was an excellent quarterback, and it's hard to assume that any quarterback will amass his 420 touchdowns. That said, I think Chad Henney's in a great position with a great supporting cast and excellent management. So we could have the next great quarterback with Henney. We actually were looking for footage of Marino trying to hit Byers in the open field, but we couldn't find it, sorry. <laughs> hey, Keith, the Dolphins may not be cursed in week two against the Vikings. If Brett Favre retires, how tough is it for a player really to walk away? It's always tough to walk away. You never truly walk away from the game. You know, even, you know, I've been retired, you know, over 10 years now, and every you know, time you get toward the playoff season in November, December, I get that itch to want to play again. But, but Brett, I think it's time for him to retire. My opinion, he retired three years ago as an athlete, but he's still in there. But it's tough. It's just extremely tough. Until you're in his shoes, it's really hard to, you know, to, to say what he's thinking. You want to play until you can't play anymore, I guess, is the answer. And Darren, the 72 Dolphins do a champagne toast every year when the last undefeated team loses. The Finns haven't won a Super Bowl since, though. How much do you buy into that curse of the flat champagne? Well, personally, I'm not very superstitious. I believe that with the great management that is in place, it may not be immediately that the Dolphins make the AFC Championship or the Super Bowl, but I'd say maybe four or five years. I don't think that the toast has anything to do with it. Well, I remember that 17-0 team. Whatever it has to do with, I want those glory years back. Uh, but here are the notable curses in sports. In Chicago, the Cubs and the curse of the Billy Goat. In Cleveland, the curse of Paul Brown. They haven't won a title since legendary coach Paul Brown was fired by Art Modell. In Philadelphia, the curse of Frank Gifford, thanks to Chuck Bednarik knocking Gifford unconscious in 1960. And in New York, the curse of the frozen lottery ball. Conspiracy theorists say it's payback for the NBA allegedly rigging the 1985 draft for the Knicks to draft Patrick Ewing. Struck him out. Hey, the Marlins' hopes of making the playoffs slipping away. The Fish taking their lumps against the Phillies and Cardinals this week before heading on the road where they play 16 of their next 19. The Marlins lost five in a row and seven of ten. The Fish now nine games behind the Braves in the National League East. Hey, Darren, the trade deadline, the Marlins sent Georgia Cantu to Texas. Should the Marlins have done even more selling at the deadline? No, I do not believe so. I think that they were very prudent by not doing more selling because they have an excellent young core. And additionally, right in the middle, at shortstop and second base, they have two excellent players. 
along with Gabby Sanchez and Logan Lomo Morrison. I think they have a bright future ahead of them. And Josh Johnson being the number one starting pitcher, I'm pretty confident. I'm happy that they didn't make too many changes. Well, great core and a new stadium. We'll have to see how that shakes out. And Keith, now your baseball knowledge. Hanley Ramirez, only one extra base hit in the entire month of July. And he's not the first batting champ to slump the following year. And what are some of the pressures for an athlete after you've had success? Well, there's always pressures, but I think one thing that Hanley is doing, that I looked at the All-Star game this year, he was in a home run hitting contest. I don't want my, my leadoff hitter being in a home run hitting contest. I think it's a combination of him over swinging and just not relaxing and getting back to the fundamentals that made him a great football, a great baseball, I want to call him a football player, a great baseball player that he is. Just get back to that. He's thinking about playing winter ball this summer, this winter. I think that'd be good. And hey, let them just take the singles and doubles. The home runs take care of themselves. So when he stops over swinging, he'll get back to getting those extra base hits again. Man, I wish you were a coach uh, for baseball to give him a little bit more advice. Uh, we'll see how it all shakes out. Hey, Darren, Dan Uglum moves ahead of Mike Lowell for the most home runs in Marlins history. And if you were his agent, what do you say to the Marlins to get him a long-term deal? Well, there were a lot of naysayers before the season started. A lot of talk about shipping him. But now, you know, breaking the, the record for Marlins home runs and also the fact that he's shown that he can perform on defense, which is an area that a lot of people were questioning before the season, that's what you bring to the table. And you say, look, you want to keep that core at shortstop and second base together. You have good young players, including even Ricky Nolasco, that they'll be looking at to extend. So between Ugla and Nolasco, I think that the Marlins will have their hands full in trying to give them a contract that they'll end up taking. Hey, try that speech. See if it works. Keith, okay. Chris Coughlin undergoing.